Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTKB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips and tricks and helping you understand better the concepts of answering the examination and succeed this examination in your first attempt. In this tutorial, we are still continuing with our chapter 2 and we shall be looking forward to have some more questions being discussed as a part of our discussion in today's session. So let's start with the next question and that question is number 12. So question number 12 is talking about which of the arguments below would you use to convince uh, your manager to organize a retrospective at the end of each release cycle. Now, first of all, uh, this could be a little tricky because sometimes people do look forward to some of the concepts specifically from the Agile site. Uh, we generally conduct retrospective at the end of uh, sprint, but not at the end of release, but why not? Because if you remember our syllabus, the syllabus described to us that retrospectives can be conducted at the end of the sprint, at the end of the release, at the end of the project, or if required, anywhere where it plays a vital role. That means wherever it is important, it can be performed. And that is where we should sometimes be very flexible with that of the information conveyed to you from the syllabus that what should I basically take into account and what should I not be confused about when looking at the questions. And that is where we are looking forward to this particular one that this retrospective being conducted at the end of the release. That's fine. I, that's just a duration. That's fine. I can conduct it anytime. So let's look at the options here and try to understand what could be the right reason. So option A says uh, retrospectives are very popular these days and the client would appreciate it if we added them to our process. Number one, client has no interest in conducting retrospective. In fact, they are not benefiting by that. It's more of our process which we are getting improved with help of conducting retrospectives. So client has nothing specific to do with your retrospectives. In fact, the client will not recommend or not uh, be kind of like getting benefited from the retrospective. Remember, retrospectives are always from the process improvement point of view within the team, okay? So let's look at the option B. Option B says, organizing retrospectives will save the organization money because without them, end user representatives do not provide immediate feedback about the product. Hold on, the entire line plays a vital role so reading every single word with 100% attention is very crucial till the end of the option. Now, if you see this entire option, once again, like, you know, organizing retrospectives, organization money is saving. Okay, got it. That's what the retrospectives do with help of improvement. And without them, the end user representatives do not provide immediate feedback. Uh, that's a little tricky. Okay, because uh, processes has nothing to do with the end user feedback. That's demonstrations what you do at the end of the sprint. And the last part in this particular option, that is feedback about the product. Now about the product is not what we do in the retrospective. Retrospective is again particularly about the process improvement and generally doesn't deal with the product feedback, which is uh, often done with the demonstrations. So that's where the last word, that is even if you concentrate on the product, word you would understand that hey this is getting deviated and this is not the right answer so let's look at option c option c says uh, process weaknesses identified during the retrospective can be analyzed and serve as a to-do list for the organization's continuous process improvement program and i think that certainly fits the objective of retrospective because number one it is about process and second, it is improving it. And of course, during the retrospectives, we do create an action item list, which is to-do list, and that adds value to improvise our process every, every single time we conduct a retrospective. So it seems like C is more relevant, but let's cross check with D. Option D says retrospective embrace five value, including courage and respect, which are crucial to maintain continuous improvement in the organization. I think, uh, if we know a little fundamental uh, of Agile, we know that courage and respect is a part of extreme programming. However, you should always cross check these things with the syllabus that whether have we covered these two keywords anywhere in our discussion in chapter two or not. Okay, so if you see that courage and respect are basically part of extreme programming, but uh, again, this is not something what we look forward to as a part of the retrospectives. 
right? So both the ways it's conflicting and we have not discussed particularly about extreme programming. For the whole team approach in the chapter one, we highlighted to you that they introduced this concept of whole team approach, but that's not what retrospective deals with. So in that context, putting up all together, the right answer for this particular question is C, that is processes, uh, process weaknesses identified during retrospective can be analyzed and serve as a to-do list for the organization's continuous process improvement program. And that's how sometimes each word plays a vital role at the end of the options to change the answer or meaning of it. So let's look at the next question here. The next question is question number 13. And that question is talking about which, of, uh, which types of the failure, that is one to four, fits with which test level the best. So there are two comparisons given to you here that is one, two, three, four other types of failure. And on the right hand side, if you see, we have A, B, C, D talking about the different levels. I think uh, given that someone really knows about the you know definitions of these level and the concepts related to it, then that's more than enough to answer this particular question. Because most importantly, all you have to do is define what kind of uh, measurements and what kind of matrices do we measure when it comes to these level or what is the objective of these levels in turn, those objectives are basically the resultant failure from this particular testing, right? So we should not think about they're talking about defects or what kind of defects do we find? It's more of like, what do you measure? What do you evaluate? What do you test when it comes to these levels? So I think it should be simple and straightforward. So let's start the comparison here. The comparison here is very simple. We have to read on the left hand side, the type of failure and trying to correlate with that of the level. So number one, failures in system behavior as it deviates from the user business needs. Now, business needs and user needs are typically covered in acceptance because that's where the end goal comes into picture or user uh, expectations are uh, basically validated. So it should go to acceptance testing. And sometimes you would get hints that is from the options and match the following type of questions. The reason is you will have some options talking about one to D and some options are not talking about one to D right that is matching the following so you can easily eliminate some of your confusions and conclude easily as well right so if i see here my option a and b is saying one to d as far as you are confident with the options but still let's be very sure so we will cross check all the four so the next one is failures to communication between the components and we know that from the definition of component integration that component integration talks about communication uh, between two or more components within the system or between systems as well but it is more of like between two components right so again communication is a synonym of integration and also called as interfaces and interactions these are all the synonyms of integration communication interfaces interaction and integration itself so b pretty much said so that the second goes to b and uh, if you see logic in a module logic in a module is something which uh, certainly deals with the concrete level measurement and module is a synonym of unit if you remember uh, we have program testing code testing unit testing module testing they all are exactly same so the word module should drive you here and we can go there even if you are one of the things are not clear then i don't think that should be confusion because by the time you have confirmation for the three the fourth one will automatically automatically align to the right answer so let's look at it so i think three will go to option a that is uh, component testing and we are left with one more that is failure in not correctly implemented business rules and business rules are more of like use cases and that pretty much goes to system testing so i think uh, that's how we can really do that but you can always start from something which you are very confident about it's not that you should do in the same order how i did it if you think you are more clear with component integration then start with that and other things will align so always choose your confident part to start with Okay, so put together the right answer for this particular question is A, that is one goes to D, that is acceptance testing, two goes to B, that is component integration testing, three goes to A, that is component testing, and four goes to C, which is system testing. And that's how we basically solve our match the following type of questions, which could be sometime inclusive of all different topics. So let's look at the next question here. The next question here we are talking about is again discussion on the retesting and regression testing and that's question number 14. The question number 14 is talking about you are testing a user story with three acceptance criteria 
that is AC1, AC2 and AC3 and then AC1 is covered by TC1, AC2 is covered by TC2 and AC3 by TC3. The test case execution history had three test runs on the three consecutive versions of the software as follows. That means there's a table provided to you here, which basically talks about the executions or runs performed at this point of time. And uh, we would look to understand that, uh, you know, there are failures and success happened during each of these execution. Now, so we understood that there are certain expectations like requirements and those requirements are being fulfilled by executions of three test cases. And there were multiple runs performed for these three test cases that is execution one, execution two and execution three. Now, what's exactly about these executions is written in the next line. The tests are repeated once you are informed that all the defects found in the test run are corrected and a new version of software is available. That means during execution one, whatever fail you reported it as a defect and then all the defects are resolved, then the next build version is given to you to test. That means the execution two may have retesting and regression testing both. So again, here retesting, we are referring to confirmation testing as per the uh, definition of our uh, definition of ISTQB that confirmation testing is you rerun a test when the defects are resolved. So right, that is the part. And then which of the above tests are executed as regression test? So right now we got the context of the scenario. We got the context of this table. And we also understood what is the question. The question is about which of these runs, like out of nine runs, are performed as regression. I would like to give you a very simple and layman level definition of confirmation testing and regression testing just to solve this particular question, which would make sense in general as well. Retesting or confirmation testing is all about repeating a failed test again, right? Initially it failed, you reported a defect, but in order to confirm the fix, you rerun the same test once again, which earlier failed, and this time it should pass. But again, pass or fail is not a guarantee. It retest can also fail, so it's okay. But point is, uh, the fail test is repeated again, is what I call it as confirmation testing. But if I repeat a pass test once again, I call it as regression testing. In fact, this is one of the simplest definition for confirmation and regression testing. With that context, let's start looking at the table, and we will have our answer very clear, visible here. So if you look at the table in execution one, I see that test case one and test case three failed, whereas test case two passed. So I certainly reported the uh, defect for test case one and test case three. Then the developer resolved it and gave me the next version. And then I did execution two. If you notice, I executed test case one again with respect to confirmation testing because in execution one, it failed, whereas test case two, it was repeated again with an objective of regression, but it had a failure. So I'm not worried about the failure, but the reason of repetition was regression, not retesting, right? And then third was actually failure, but I repeated it for retesting, that is confirmation testing, and it continued to fail. So that's again with respect to confirmation. So five, that is execution number five, was executed with respect to regression. Now again, I reported the failures five and six to the developer and then raised a defect for that. Then we got the next build and we performed execution three. And as a part of execution three, if you notice here, we repeated the test four as seven from the point of regression, whereas five and six as eight and nine with respect to confirmation testing, which I think pretty much describes that five and seven are the executions which were performed as regression test because that's what the question is all about. So if you read the line number, last line in the question, once again, it says, which of the above tests are executed as regression test? So out of nine, five was repeated with a context of regression and seven was repeated as a context of context of seven. Rest everything was uh, re-executed with a context of confirmation testing. And with that said, the right answer here is B, that is only five and seven are the tests which are executed as regression test. And I hope that makes it very clear and simple for some of the logical based understanding of the concepts, which should give you the clarity on picking up the right answer. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.